I'm Manuel Vivo, and I work in the Android Developer Relations team. With me is... I'm Daniel Santiago. I work on the Android Toolkit team. I'm so excited to talk about dependency injection today. We know it's an important topic for the community by the way it affects your application. So we are start with a quick introduction, introduction to DI and also the benefits it has to your application so that everyone is on the same page. Then obviously we will talk about Dagger and other stuff that I don't want to spoil. Classes often require references to other classes to complete some work. And those references are called dependencies. And every single application has to deal with dependencies one way or another. So as we can see in the diagram, a car cannot work without an engine. So we can say that engine is a dependency of car, or that car depends on engine. And with dependency injection, those dependencies are provided to a class instead of the class creating them itself. So instead of car building its own instance of engine, engine will be provided to car, for example, at creation time. If we see this with some code, you will see that uh, car here has the res responsibility to build its own instance of engine. But not only that, apart from that responsibility, it has to know how to configure it. And that might be too much for a class to do. And so with dependency injection, that responsibility is taken away from the class. And now that parameter is passed as a dependency. And so car can keep uh, small and focused, and for example, managing its state and not having to worry about all of that. And we believe that you should always apply dependency injection principles to your application. It doesn't matter how you do it, but doing it sets the fundamentals for a testable and a scalable application. Why is dependency injection that important? First, it helps you reusing code and decoupling dependencies. Classes no longer control how the dependencies are created, and therefore they can work with any configuration. And so here we can see that by passing in different implementations of engine, we can reuse car. That's it, we don't have to do anything else, we don't have to change the source code. It also provides a good balance of loosely coupled dependencies, a better balance than other alternatives can provide. For example, with a service locator, those dependencies are a bit more loose than with DI. And it also helps you refactoring your code. Those dependencies now become the API surface of a class at either creation time or uh, compile time, instead of being hidden as an implementation detail. Therefore, it keeps you with a smaller and more focused classes. So if we see an example here, we have car with a very, very long source code. And when you see that your class is doing more than it should, probably you, you, should, you can extract that logic out of the class put it in a different class and pass it that as a dependency. For example, with engine-related work, we can create class, uh, the class engine, and then pass that in as a dependency. Now, car reduces its scope, and now it's simpler, and the cognitive load to work with class is a bit lower. This is what is called single responsibility principle. But if we keep iterating on this, when it makes sense, of course, you will see that now car becomes simpler to manage, and now we have a small source code, and we're just focusing on what car uh, should do. For example, you know, assembling few parts, um, making it simple. So if we want to visualize this, we'll have, instead of having this massive class, you can split it out in different parts, and so it is simpler to manage, and then also multiple people, people can work at the same time on the app without conflicts. DI also helps you with testing. Now, you can swap in different implementations of a dependency to test all the different scenarios that you want. So for example, here we have a happy path, and we just want to pass in a fake engine just to check that car works okay. Now, if you want to check how car works with a failing engine, you just have to pass a different instance, a uh, different implementation of engine. For example, this uh, fake failing engine. And that's it, you don't have to do anything else. And as I said before, it doesn't matter how you do dependency injection. However, we have some recommendations to give you. Before showing anything, I would say that these recommendations are relative, and you have to use your own judgment because every application is different. But we think that for medium and large projects, you should use Dagger, which is a dependency injection library. And this is because Dagger is built to scale, and it scales better than any other alternatives. For small applications, it doesn't really matter what you do. So you can use a manual BI implementation, you can use a service locator pattern, or you can even use Dagger. 
The truth is that the sooner you add Dagger to your application, the better it will be, and the less you will have to refactor it in the future. If we see a representation of this with a graph, and we compare the cost of managing your dependencies with your application size, you will see that manual dependency injection starts at zero cost, but it grows exponentially when the app gets bigger. Manual dependency injection is very important because if you try it yourself, you will see all the benefits that DI can provide you. But then when you start adding that to a bigger application, you will see a lot of boilerplate codes and a lot of stuff you have to manage yourself. A service locator instead starts with a small cost, but then there is a steep linear slope when the app gets bigger. And by the end of that, you will have kind of the same problems with uh, manual DI. So you will have boilerplate codes, and you know, not that good. On the other hand, Dagger has a high starting cost. It takes a while to set it up, but uh, when the app gets bigger, it kind of plateaus, and then that maintenance cost that you would have with the other alternatives, you wouldn't have that with, with Dagger. So for those who don't know what Dagger is, Dagger is a dependency injection library that helps you managing the dependencies for you. So it is gonna generate the, the, the code that you would have written by hand otherwise. And that generation of code happens at uh, build time. So it is performant and safe to use in production. So you are gonna avoid those uh, runtime surprises and it's gonna provide you correctness at build time. So in case it wasn't clear, we want you to use Dagger. <laughs> And another benefit I can say is that um, Dagger uh, doesn't use reflection, even though reflection got faster in Android over the years, not using reflection is even better. But yeah, actually we want you to use Dagger. <laughs> so it's our recommended tool, and we think it's the best framework out there to do dependency injection because of its correctness, uh, performance, and scalability. And we know that because we use it in production. We use it in our apps like Gmail, Photos, and YouTube. You can see how big those applications are and how much they can scale. However, we know that Dagger and dependency injection are complex topics and they have a steep learning curve. But we want, you to, help, we want to help you in this journey to learn all of this. So how are we helping? We have released a set of documentation to better help you understand dependency injection and Dagger from the basics to the most complex topics. You can see the documentation in, in that link up there. And it goes, it assumes nothing. It starts from scratch. It's gonna explain everything, assuming that you know nothing. So I recommend checking it out. And why are we doing this? What we want to have is a common, common ground for everyone to, that wants to learn dependency injection and wants to use, uh, use Dagger in the applications. Nowadays, if you want to do that, you might have to go to different sources, different samples, different blog posts. All of them use a different setup, and all of them use Dagger in a different way. So it is very difficult to understand all the topics and relate them together. And so that's why we want to have a common guidance, a common ground, and we're trying to help both beginners and more experienced users by giving good practices. So just to give you a sneak peek of what's going on, you will see that the documentation is full of best practices, diagrams, and code everything you would expect. But that's not it. We also released a new code lab. We believe that the best way you have to understand or to learn a topic is with hands-on code. And so we released this code lab called Using Dagger in Your Android Application, where by the end of the code lab, you will build an application graph like this. And it starts like any other application. It has uh, an initial you know, a manual dependency injection implementation that you will refactor to build something like this. Cool. What about Dagger Android? Dagger Android is a library built on top of Dagger that reduces the boilerplate code when using Dagger in Android framework classes, such as activities or fragments. It was an attempt from our part to make Dagger simpler in Android, but it didn't work. We heard from you. <laughs> we heard from you, and uh, it doesn't solve the problems that you really have in your daily jobs. So we know we can do better, and so we are stopping its development. Uh, we, we are not uh, adding any more features to, to that, because we think we can do better, and we can have other ways to simplify Dagger. And so we are trying to reduce the amount of code you have to write, and we're already making some improvements. Danny is gonna tell you more about it. Thank you. So one of the most immediate improvements we're doing is actually making Dagger work better with Kotlin. And you know, I'm always impressed with the under community, that's you all, because this was something that started in the community and we took it in. 
and in a future version of Dagger, uh, you'll be able to use its Dagger API in a more automatic way with Kotlin. So this is this was on you. So thank you. Um, to show you what exactly we mean, uh, you'll be able to use um, object classes with module. You could do this already using JVM static, um, but you shouldn't. You should be able to just you know not need uh, JVM static, which creates this extra method. Uh, Dagger will be able to understand this. Um, other issues Dagger had with calling was uh, qualifier annotations. It was like a hit or miss situation. You would add a qualifier to a property, it would uh, end up on the getter, and Dagger wouldn't understand it. But similarly, we're trying to fix that. That should just work. And on a similar kind of subject, uh, Kotlin wildcards also confuse Dagger a lot. Uh, this is a hardest problem to tackle, but ideally, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't need that anymore. Um, so keep a lookout on a future Dagger, uh, on a Dagger version near uh, future version near you. Uh, it'll have some of these improvements, uh, and we're still working on some others like companion objects. Now, on the longer term approach, I'm super happy to announce that we're actually joining efforts with the Dagger team to create what we think is like a better and simpler DI approach. Uh, it's, it's still under construction. Uh, we're still uh, working on this, so there's no library to try out. But I'll show you uh, how we're trying to solve this and some of the ideas and more or less how it'll look like. Um, we think we can make Dagger DI with Dagger simpler in Android by really letting you focus on your dependency declaration and specifically taking away that setup process. Uh, you really set up your components once and then you kind of like don't touch them again in a while. Um, let's walk through some code to illustrate what I mean. Uh, in Dagger, you usually declare your dependencies uh, in modules. Uh, you create a function, and this is a pretty simple one. All we're trying to say here is that for every player that we request somewhere, players and interface, we want to provide an implementation, the player input. Everything that you write in this function is important. That at binds annotation, the parameter, the return type, it tells Dagger, uh, the type of definition that you're declaring, the type of binding. Um, but that's a simple one. Some can get pretty complicated. Or, you know, qualifier annotation, multiple parameters, a body with more configuration. Um, but the truth is that we really believe that everything that you write there has a meaning and it's important. So the time you spent working with DI, that development time should really go towards those definitions because that's what you keep working on as your app scales. Uh, sadly, that's not the only important part. The truth is that there's also the injection points. Uh, this is usually your activities, services, um, fragments. And usually with, with Dagger, uh, you use the JSR annotation uh, to signify that you want a property to be injected. But you also have to do some extra work. You, have, you gotta create this component probably grab it from your application context, do member injection. The reason this has to be done like this is because there's no construction injection in your activities or services, at least not on API 29 and below. Um, yeah, so that's not, <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, but if it's API 29, you know, that's not a viable solution uh, if you wanna support older devices. Uh, but we, we, we want you to, we kinda want you we want to burn that away. We really want you to not have to deal with this setup. You know, it should be enough for you to tell us um, that you want this Android component to be an entry point into your graph, to, for its dependency to be uh, what starts getting everything from the graph. Um, not only we want to support those dependencies that you will define, but we also want to uh, provide easy hookups to other more lifecycle related things, so like view model. So this should be pretty seamless to do too. Um, so kind of to summarize, those entry points are definitely important, but we feel like you shouldn't have to work too much towards them. It would be enough for you to tell us, hey, I want these hundred components to be injectable. Please do whatever you need to do to make that happen. So uh, if we go back to how you currently do things, you have to define components with Dagger, you define your modules and the component annotation, um, and then the entry point 
we saw that uh, we can uh, represent that differently, but what happened with those modules? How, we, how do we link those together? Well, if we go back to a module, we feel it might be just enough for you to tell us, hey, I have this module that's provide bindings and they can go into a component. The thing here is that these components will be predefined. Everybody needs a singleton component and <laughs> everybody defines it in a different way. So why isn't there one out of the box? Well, we feel we can do that for you. Uh, and not just for singleton component, but for other type of uh, lifecycle related components like activity or service. Um, so in a way, we can, again, take away that setup from you and you can just focus on your bindings. Um, now, most of what I mentioned is on the production side, but one of the benefits of VI and Dagger is testing. If you are doing unit tests, that's pretty simple. Construction injection uh, can get you pretty far. Um, but when you're trying to do something more complicated, like integration tests, you need a lot of work uh, to just have production versus testing dependencies. Um, if we look at, small, uh, at a small example here, we're trying to test, again, that player that we had and, uh, with an activity, and we wanna see, this is like a white box test, so we wanna see what happens when you, uh, when you interact with your player, how your activity react. Uh, the thing here is that player can be pretty complicated to build, and there's no reason why your production binding definition cannot also work for your testing. Um, but this is somewhat, sometimes hard to do, we feel we can solve this if we provide you with some test utilities that will create a component for each test um, so that you can get those uh, bindings available. But not only that, the true thing about the AI is that you can change uh, part of your state so you can further configure your test and test new cases. But to do that with the AI, usually uh, replace your dependency with fake, but this is way harder to do in integration tests but we also think there should be a way where you can define uh, test modules that will simply swap parts of your graph um, only for tests. Uh. <clears throat> so, kind of to summarize, we feel we can provide you a simpler DI approach by, again, letting you focus on those binding definition. Uh, we could have module discovery, which could be great uh, for libraries too. Um, predefined components, so you don't have to worry about setting those up, where to do memory injection, and the life cycle of them. Uh, we can improve the, the testing story with some test utilities and simply a better way to do test configurations. Uh, this wouldn't be a close thing. We would actually provide APIs. So if you really need to do some custom component, we will have APIs for that. So if you want to fall back to your hardcore dagger, <laughs> you can do that. Um, this is our Jetpack Dependency Injection Initiative. It's, uh, it'll be integrated, it's built on top of Dagger or integrated with Dagger. We're actually working with the Dagger team. It's obviously more opinionated in the sense that we have those predefined components and you change a bit how you do things. Um, because I work on the Jetpack team, we <laughs> want to provide you also uh, Jetpack and sections and these are basically abilities to construct in your, your fragment, have those multi-bindings for view model and and even work manager worker. So basically simpler integration with the rest of the R components library. So you're leaving this room, what should you take away? Well, please use the I. We feel that the value that it brings you is pretty good. Uh, it, it creates good patterns uh, that can scale. Uh, give a shot at Dagger, and we know it's complicated, so we have some guidance around it, and overall we're improving the I in Android, so stay tuned. Uh, these are some good ideas and we want your feedback on it, so come find us in the sandbox, talk to us, and hopefully we can shape a better future for DI. Thank you. Mm -hmm.